So we're here today to talk about the X, right? You know, what is my X? What is your X? What is the X? And you know, I've done a lot of soul searching thinking about this, but you know, we're on a college campus. I just couldn't resist. I figured we should start with a pop quiz. Okay, but I promise you guys, it's pretty easy. Here's the first first part of it. Can anybody tell me what this is? Cell phone. Yes, this is my Samsung cell phone. Okay. Uh, that was an easy one. I, I know. Uh, how about this? Uh, a <laughs> uh, selfie stick. Yes, it is a selfie stick. This is shockingly uh, uh, revolutionary and also really upsets a lot of people. This has actually been banned at an upcoming Apple Developers Convention. Uh, they've been banned at the Kentucky Derby. They've been banned at museums across America. I had no idea I was such a rebel when I got my selfie stick, uh, but apparently I am. Uh, so the last part of the quiz is this. GoPro. GoPro, I love this. It takes the most beautiful images ever. And you can throw this thing in the water, you can strap it on your back, and the, the things you can do with this are so much fun. And you know what, you guys? You all got an A. That was an easy quiz. And, and you're right, but to be honest, you're also wrong. Yes, this is a cell phone, a selfie stick, and a GoPro, but together, these three things, these are my news crew, my camera person, my live truck. My news crew, my camera person, and my live truck. I rely on these three pieces of technology to tell news in a way that has never been done before. And I fully believe that these three pieces of technology are going to transform the news and media forever. In my work, we call ourselves chasers. It's what you could compare to a reporter, but I'm going to point out all of the reasons that we are not reporters. Okay, so when you think of a reporter covering an event, what do you think of? You probably think of somebody kind of like our camera person back there with a big camera on a tripod stuck in one place, right? So I want to show you what I do uh, when I cover an event. This is really going to blow your mind. I, uh, I go like this, and I walk around. I'm not kidding. This is what I do. And sometimes when you cover a story, you want to put yourself in it. You want to show that you're there. Uh, so I do this thing where I, uh, it's going to, again, blow your mind. I reverse the camera, and I hit record. <laughs> okay, now, I, I walk around events, and I cover them just like this. And if I want it to be a little bit more steady, uh, maybe I want a little more distance in my shot, I take my selfie stick with my little adapter doohickey that I don't really know what it's called, and you see me walking around like this. And if I really want to look just awesome and very cool, I take my GoPro and I record myself like this. I, I stop people. People stop and take pictures of me when I'm doing this because it's so absurd. I know. I know. Um, and people in the industry, they definitely stop and look at me. And some of them are curious, a lot of them are laughing, and some of them are scared. Some of them are scared about what this implies for the future of my industry and, and what it means. Now most of the time I'll stick my GoPro down and I'll just you know put it somewhere here. It's called a two shot, so you want two cameras on you. And the other thing I said was that this is my live truck. So if you don't know what a live truck is, there are those big trucks that you see at breaking news events with the satellites in the sky. It's how they report back from location. This is how I report from location. I have my cell phone like this, I plug in my earbuds, and I launch my free Skype app. That's how I report from the scene. Okay, and then when the timing makes sense, I, I pack up my equipment, it takes a lot of time, <laughs> And I go back to the studio. And when I go back to the studio, I sit around the studio. And here, I think I'll put my book over here now. Uh, let's get a new angle. I don't use a teleprompter. I tell people in the newsroom the stories that I've researched and uncovered. And then, to top it all off, 
we have a conversation about it. Now, this can be a little bit difficult to conceptualize and visualize, because right, right now you see a cell phone, and I'm walking around with it, and you say, okay, that's kind of quirky and different, but how does this really turn into something that makes it on the air every single night? So I have a video for you that kind of puts it all together for you. Paul, one of my great coworkers, helped make it. He's back here supporting me. And I want you guys to see what it is I do every day. I feel an obligation to be a voice that is not shared and not heard often enough. Governor, uh, there's been some criticism of the cost associated with the report. Veronica, in your ongoing chase of Governor Christie, this time it took you to Washington, D.C. I am in Atlantic City. Annapolis, Maryland, here at the State House. So I'm here, I'm in New Hampshire. Today I'm heading to the Maryland State House. So let's get on the road. Okay, one quick stop, coffee, of course. <laughs> this part of the chase, I can't complain. You caught up with Senator Rand Paul. You know, honestly, he's a little bit unfriendly. Um, I don't think he really got the concept of our show and how we shoot things on GoPros, on cell phones. He asked me not to use the cell phone. Hey. This is really close. I don't really want to be filmed. I'll, 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 just, just, I'll just use this phone. Is anyone talking about solutions? Just pointing out some things that I think a lot of people just aren't aware of so that when you hear these sound bites from the governor, you might not know that just because we balance the budget that we've got billions, billions, and billions in debt. We need someone with testicular fortitude. That's what I call it. It's a show okay. Governor Christie is about to give his remarks. The governor of the state of Maryland, Governor Larry Hogan. Now, after Governor Christie's remarks, I had a moment to speak with Lieutenant Governor Kim Cordano. What we're trying to do is fix the problems today. This is an issue where Governor Christie can really walk a, an awesome bipartisan line because Republicans are going to love it as a Second Amendment victory. It's about 10 15. This thing doesn't even start till 11.30. It's in the 30s outside. It's supposed to start snowing at 11. And this is part of the chase that's not always much fun. You've got all of the press here on their tripods, stationary, stuck in one place. And I'm here covering this with my GoPro and my Samsung on a selfie stick. It is really cold outside. It hasn't started to snow yet, so that's a good thing. Of course, it is snowing now. She's actually wide awake right now, and she's getting her breast implants as I'm here Skyping with you. What made you decide to go through with the breast augmentation? I spoke with Dolores Zindel Reinhardt. Now, she lost her daughter to a domestic violence dispute. As she told me her story and we looked at the pictures, you know, we, we couldn't help but cry together. Uh, but I did it because I wanted to. 
Because sometimes we take ourselves a little bit too seriously, and who doesn't want a selfie with Rand Paul? I don't know, it seemed like the right thing to do. And if you're curious about the logistics of it, I didn't have a camera person there with me. I had nobody shooting that for me. So what did I have? I had my GoPro in my right hand, and I had my cell phone in my left hand. So now we're going to take a TEDx selfie. Right, gotta have that. It'll be, um, let's, let's see, okay, is that, is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very good, love it. Okay, so, uh, and you know, the idea that I walked in there, and it was a serious interview, and I did have serious questions, but the fact that I, I made him quite uncomfortable, I think, when I put my cell phone in his face so much so that I had to put it down, and that's why it is always good that we have two cameras, because I did have my, my GoPro on the selfie stick to still have that interview happen. You know, there are a lot of reporters that would watch this and other things that were in that film and tell you they were not the right thing to do. Let's go to the next spot. There we go. Yeah, right around there. That's perfect. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this was a wild one. Let me tell you, the, no the moment when I find, when I found the doctor who tells me that he can do breast augmentation while you're awake, Whoa, okay, I mean, the normal way to cover this in the media would be to say, okay, doctor, well, we're going to sit down, and we're going to talk in your office, and I'd like to meet a patient that's had it done, and maybe have some before and after pictures. No. I said to him, I said, I want to be there, I want to be in the room with you while this happens, and you know what, I'd really like to Skype with my team, because I don't want to just ask the woman that's having done questions, I want them to be able to ask the woman some questions, and this was like an outer body experience, I mean, the man is literally on the other side of this curtain, and he says to me, Ronica, we just finished the left one, <laughs> but like, you can't make this up, there is no typical day in my job. And that brings me to the last part that I want to want to show you here. Perfect. Uh, this is a moment that I will never forget. This is the day that I met the mother of a victim of domestic violence who lost her daughter far too soon. And I went into that interview that day knowing that it would be touching and knowing that I would be moved, but never knowing that I would be moved quite in the way that I did. You know, I, she stood there and she showed me pictures of her beautiful, intelligent daughter whose life was lost far too soon, and she started to cry. And you know what, I'm a reporter, but I'm a person. And I started to cry too, and I'm listening to her tell me this story, and the only thing that I knew to do was to hug her. And again, there are reporters out there that would tell you that's the wrong thing to do. But I challenge you this, you're not a better journalist if you sit there and have no emotion. Impartiality and objectivity matter, but so does being human. That is something that so many people, especially those in the news, have forgotten. All right, we can, we can take that down, because it's perfect. Thank you so much for helping me with that. So the second part of that video is what happens inside the room. The conversation, the idea that I come back after I'm in the field reporting on my stories, and I don't use a teleprompter, I don't read what's in front of me. That is something that is on every newscast that you see every night in America. And then after we report on our stories, we have a conversation about it. Now the idea and the intention of that conversation is to sort of mimic what you might have around your kitchen table. Share ideas, debate, have a conversation. And that is not scripted. There are times when I leave that room and I don't want to talk to my coworkers because I can't believe they think the things that they said. There are times in that room when we laugh so much that the conversation is completely derailed because we're covering something completely insane. And there are times when we change each other's minds because that's life. That's what happens when you have a conversation about the news. That's what happens when you have a conversation about the media. You know, this experiment in media, it's about using technology and truth to tell stories differently. You know, my producer, he sums it up like this. He says, it's about humanity. And what we do can be incredibly intimidating. Here's one consistency that you'll find 
amongst all of the media, including our own. Every night when we interview our subjects, we ask them to put themselves on the line. We ask them to share some of their most personal, intimate stories and experiences with the world, to open themselves up for judgment, ridicule, whatever it may be. And the difference is that we attempt to meet them in the middle and do the same. You know, I believe that what I do is my ex. Delivering the news in a revolutionary and compassionate way. It fulfills me in a way that I just didn't even think was possible. Right? I mean, the running joke in my office, we say, we say, T-G-I-M. Thank goodness it's Monday. And if you can believe it, we actually mean it. Because Monday represents a new beginning a new opportunity to do something creative and different, to take this industry and turn it upside down to do what we believe will make it better. And when I think back on it all, it scares me a little bit because I realize I could have easily let fear and judgment and what is practical and safe stop me from finding my ex. When I was offered the opportunity to work here, I had a perfectly safe and respectable, good job here at Drexel. And you know, when I came home that day and told my husband, I said, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to work on TV, honey. Uh, you can imagine his excitement. So he said, you know, I said, wait, OK, wait, let me, let me hear about this. What are you, what are you talking about? So, so he says, uh, well, tell me a little bit about it. Um, where is the studio going to be, Veronica? I don't know. We don't have a studio yet. Um, okay. Uh, well, who's going to host the show? I don't know. We don't have a host yet. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but then, when is it going to air? We don't have an air date. Uh, okay. All right, Veronica. Let's let's try this differently. Uh, what do you have? Well, this is what I had. I had an idea, and a vision, and something that I believed in. We were going to tell the news with our cell phones and then talk about it. When I think back on how crazy that sounds, honestly, like sometimes I can't believe I did it. But the funny thing is, when I was in the moment, when I was in the moment of making this decision, I never once doubted that I was going to make it. Never. Because in my gut, in my instinct, it felt right. It felt like something I had to do, like there was no other choice out there. Finding your ex, it's about forgetting your fear and trusting your instinct. The ex is a journey of infinite possibilities, only limited by the preconceived notions that you bring to the table. The preconceived notion that you can't tell the news with a GoPro or a cell phone. And here's the thing, I think that we all have the same X in this room. Even if you never want to do the job that I do. The X is your joy. The X is what feeds your soul. The X is your bliss. And I challenge you to take risks and do whatever you can. People are going to laugh at you. They're going to judge you. They're going to think you're completely insane when you're standing there with a selfie stick and a GoPro talking to yourself in the middle of a breaking news situation. But I promise you it will be worth it and you won't regret it. Thank you.